In the previous video, we saw how we could verify that two passwords have been entered and that the two passwords both match. What we really want to do is ensure that the password is of a reasonable security. There is no built-in method like required or email to do this, so we have to add a custom method. Fortunately, adding custom methods is really easy. All we do is we use the static function of a validator object called add method. We pass to this method the name of the method. Um, in this case, we'll call it strong password. And what this corresponds to is the property that you specify here. So we would say something like strong password true. We'll come back to that in a second. We also pass the function that we call to validate that the input is correct. So we take the value and we also take the element. So the value will be the value of the element and the element will be the element itself. This function should return true if the value is valid and it should return false if it's invalid. If it is invalid, we have to specify a default error message, which in our case will be something like your password must be at least six characters long and contain at least one number plus or, and one character. I'll just abbreviate that so it's um, a bit easier to see on the screen. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say return value.length greater than or equal to six. And what this is going to do is it's going to return true if the password is longer than six characters, meaning that it is valid and false if it is not greater than or equal to six characters in length. And when it returns false, it will give us this error message. Now, obviously we're not implementing this function for the sake of checking its length. We also want to check some other things. I've done this in advance because it's not really worth typing out in this particular video. But what we do essentially is we call this method called optional on the element. And what this does is it checks to see if this input is required or not, because if it's not required, there's no need to perform this validation. If it is not optional, then we check that the value's length is greater than or equal to six. We check that it contains at least one digit and that it contains at least one character. Watch this, if I go to the uh, password property, this, by the way, I never really explained, but it's just a shorthand way of saying that it's required. We replace that in this case with the literal and we'll say required true and we'll say strong password true. You could, if you wanted to, specify this method for both password and for password too. But in my opinion, it's better to do it this way. Your opinion might be different. You have the power to do whichever you like. But watch this. If I go and enter an email address that's valid, I enter a password like ABC, which is clearly, or even if I enter the value ABC and a password that doesn't match, you'll see that it says our password must be greater than six characters in length, yada, yada, yada. So we'll fix that. We'll say password is equal to password one and we'll confirm the password. And now when we press sign up, the submission is valid. And as you can see, the password was password one. That was really easy. Something that's also pretty neat about this plugin is that if you look at the source code, there is this folder called additional. And inside of here, there are a bunch of additional methods. These are kind of non-standard validation methods. So obviously things like required and email are very fundamental, but these are kind of more custom. So you can say mobile Netherlands or mobile UK. There's one here called no white space. And as you can see, it's implemented in exactly the same manner as we implemented ours. It checks to see if it's optional. If it's not, it ensures for this pattern matches and it shows this default error message. It's really neat. If you want to use any of these additional methods, you have to reference a file called additionalmethods.js. So I'm going to go to index.html and I'll show you how to do this real quick. I believe what I'm looking for is this additionalmethods.min.js. The proper link is on the CDN page somewhere, but in fact, it's right here. That looks good to me. And what I'll do is I'll add another field name, uh, we'll call this first name. The placeholder will be first name. The type of course is going to be text. And very quickly, and I like doing this because it just illustrates how quickly you can add validation rules. I type the HTML in two seconds. Then I go here and I say, oh, okay, first name. Yes, this is required. Um, what no white space. I think that's what it's called. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's called no white space. We'll set that to true. And also, is there one, I think, to ensure that there's letters only? Yes, letters only. So we'll say letters only is equal to true. Because this is really, really good point. 
This is only asking for the first name. We'll ask for the second name as well, but we won't actually define any validation for that. I just want to make a quick point. If the user is going to your website and they enter their first name, they'll be like, oh, okay, I'll enter my name. And they type it in and then they get an error that says, no white space, please. Immediately, they know that they're missing. They might not have read as far ahead to see that you're supposed to enter your second name afterwards. They might be too eager. So immediately, they get an error. And when this is here, they can't submit their form. It's really good like that. Similarly, values with numbers, it's just, I don't, I'm not hugely knowledgeable about other cultures, but I'm fairly certain that there are no cultures who have numbers in their names. So unless it's a username or a display name, but this is an actual uh, account for a real legal name. So it doesn't make sense to have numbers. So yes, and here's the thing as well. This is all about validation. It's about confirming that an email matches a certain format or that the value is not obviously erroneous. I don't think this is a real name in any country, although frankly it could be, but really it isn't. Similarly, we could add an email. Like I've been using Alex at email.com. I don't own that email. I don't know who does. There's nothing to say that I own it. Validation is validating that this is a correct format. What you want is verification that verifies that whoever says they own this email does own their email. And that's something really common. You see email verification all the time with account with things like PayPal and banks and things like Google AdSense. You have to specify your legal name and they'll confirm that via some kind of ID or verify it using some kind of ID. This is strictly validation. And just one talking about caveats. Remember, this is totally client side. It's possible, in this case, I'm just sending a GET request. You'd never really do this in production. But it's possible if I come here and I do a password that's not secure, I could bypass the JavaScript validation. I could just as well disable JavaScript altogether and bypass all this client validation very easily. You need to also ensure that on the server side, be it a node server, an ASP.NET server, whatever it is, that the input is correct. Anyway, that's been how to implement a custom method as well as just showing you that there are other additional methods just in case you think that uh, you need to implement something when you don't. A really common thing is to have a regex pattern and there is a method in here that I really needed as soon as I started using this library. Anyway, thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can implement that Ajax validation like I showed you in the introduction. That's something that's really cool in my opinion.